presentation and we'll be sharing this evening. So we can get started at 5.30. So I have to read a little blurb that by now everyone should be used to. Uh, Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GLC 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's June 16, 2021 Act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, this meeting of the Webster Conservation <coughs> Commission will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. The board will record the meeting for the purpose of note taking. Anyone else wishing to record the meeting for personal use must notify the chairman in advance. So for all of those that are on the um, meeting and not directly participating, we ask that you put yourselves on mute until your particular issue is called in front of the commission. So the first item on our agenda this evening is the meeting minutes for January 24th. Has everyone had a chance to read them? Yes. Would anyone like to make a motion? A motion we accept the minutes for January 24th as written. Thank you, Robin. Second. Dan with the second. Sorry. Are you yes, sorry. That's okay. Warm it up here. Uh, Ms. Johnson. Yes. Dr. Jewell. Yes. Mr. Duteau. Yes. Um, Ms. Chirillo. Yes. Okay, first we're going to handle the request for determination of applicability. Uh, the first one up is two Bates Crossing. Do we have anyone on the phone on the meeting related to two Bates Crossing? Okay, and we don't know for sure whether anyone will be joining us. Is that right, Mary? Right. So I'd like to suggest we continue this to some far off date to give an opportunity to reschedule since we have to put a date on the calendar. Uh, do you want to do March? No, further. Like okay. June. What June? Whatever your latest date is. Uh, do you really want June? <laughs> How about? Do you really want it to go out there? Uh, Whatever you can find. Actually, my sorry, to oh. look for my meeting dates. I'll wait for you anytime, Mary. <laughs> okay. We have one on June sixth. It, that's a little far. Do you want to do April? <laughs> if, if you're bought, if commissioners, anybody got an opinion? I'll make um, a motion that we continue that until June 6th. June 6th. All right. Okay. Thank you. And we do have a meeting June 6th. Yes, verifying that. Yes, we do. Do we have to vote on it? Yes. Uh, Ms. Cirillo. Yes. Dr. Jewell. Yes. Mr. Duteau. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Okay, moving on to notice of intent. I do have the notices for the first two. Okay. Uh, the first one on the agenda is for 27 Bates Grove Road. In accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, the Wetlands Protection Act, 
This public hearing is being held on a notice of intent filed by Thomas Claybert for the removal of a railroad tie wall, retaining wall, and construction of a sloped stone bank at 27 Bates Grove Road in Webster. How's it going, Dan? I'm, I'm here with Tom. Yeah. Right, nice. Chad. And is Tom me. here? Mr. Claybright, are you on the phone? Oh, I think he's muted. All right. Well, if not, what is it? He has a wall. It's all I, was water. Mute. I was muted. Oh, you there, Tom? Yeah, I'm here. All right. What what is his timber walls rotting out? And if it fails any further, it's going to be a big mess. And we're just trying to take the timber wall out and just grade it a little bit and put a seawall in. And at the bottom, we're going to put the rip wrap for the wave breaker. I lost you guys for some reason. You there? No, we're here. We didn't lose right, Oh, okay. We're just bringing yeah, up yeah. Um, the pictures so and stuff. Like, basically, like a seawall you see on the ocean. And we're going to do three layers of um, non biodegradable felt with three quarter stone so nothing washes out. It's, it's a pretty basic job. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, when when you a little when unclear. You one moment, please. When yeah. it, in the description, you have it described as graded at an angle. Can you yeah, describe yeah. the wall a little bit more than saying it's a seawall? Chad? Yeah. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. So okay. When you say it's a seawall, I perceive a straight wall, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be a straight wall. So can well, you describe it? A seawall is actually on a slant of 35 to 45 degree angle. So the water comes up in a little bit, but it's going to be all stone. We have um, anywhere from 10 to 18 inch, two inch to three inch thick stones we're going to put on the hill. So we're three quarter stone, but underneath that, we're going to do, I'd say, two um, layers of non-biodegradable fabric with the stone. And at the bottom, we're going to put riprap. Because right now he has the wood and it's all rotted and his land's ready to, to fall in. So yeah, right, right now it is a a, uh, a a wall that goes in into the water. And uh, what the intention here is to, to have it slope in, to have the stone slope into uh, the water and reach the bottom. Okay, and when you, are you planning to put the rip wrap where the water currently meets the wall? Is that your plan? Absolutely, to yeah, the, the wave breaker basically. So the waves don't come up and wash it all back out. So we're gonna come up about, I'd say anywhere from six to 18 inches, depending on the area of the rip wrap, like we put over at, um, I put that job, but yeah. Eight, eight to 10 inch rip wrap. Excuse me, Michelle. Yeah. Um, is that the only plan that they intend to submit with the notice of intent? Because it, it doesn't meet any of the criteria for what a plan needs to show uh, for the commission to review for a notice of intent. Okay. So can I, can, can I jump in there a second, Michelle? Um, yeah. I guess, now Mr. Claver. I've been yes. to your property twice. I was there just this other day, this weekend. Um, I did not find any problem with your plan. Uh, but then looking at the, your application, uh, Chad has checked off the box saying uh, that describes the information that needs to be submitted along with the NOI. And he's checked off the box, but the information hasn't been submitted you know, son, Dan, I don't think I checked that box off. I didn't check no box. Yeah, yeah, you uh, did. I, it's I, on yeah. page four. Yeah, I, I probably like, checked I, that I, off. I, I filled out the form. It, oh, okay. the form yeah, well, um, nevertheless, the, that box checked off is, is says that this certain amount of information is supposed to be supplied along with the application. And, and although I like your plan, it the application hasn't been submitted the way it's supposed to be. Now, I, I think that's easy to rectify. 
Oh, absolutely. What? A little bit of drawing too with this. this yeah, right there. Really not that clear, Tom. And uh, okay, I, I I checked that off. Chad did not check that off. I, okay. Well, yeah, it, it really doesn't matter who actually put the check mark there. It, but obviously, as you can see, the NMY says these are the things that need to be submitted. And we don't have all of those things. And I, like I say, it's relatively easy to fix. But right. Dan, Dan, could you email me whatever you need on there and I'll take care of it? So let's, let's be specific. Um, so what we need is a more specific project drawing, which would include things like exactly where the riprap will start, how tall the riprap will be, what size it's going to be, how wide it's going to be, the beginning and the ending of uh, the wall that you have with a felt underlayment. Uh, I would like to see a, some kind of indication of the water level so that we understand where you're going to be because you are likely in the chapter 91 realm with this wall. Well, Michelle, you know, the tough part about that is um, we don't know where the water is going to be in the spring. We didn't know where it was going to be in the fall. You have to work by what the right. That that's what I mean. We're just trying. We're, we're trying to get things get rolling for the spring, but I don't know if we have two months of rain. If the water level is going to be high like last year. There's a midpoint. So I, I've asked this question too, uh, but there is a way you can kind of get a mid range to um, the least and the most. Okay, because in the last couple right, of years so we've had excessive and we've had really down. We're asking for that midpoint. It is okay. hard to do, but it okay, can so be done. Okay, so middle of the road then. Yeah. Because we yeah, don't know we what do. we're getting for rain. We don't know what we're getting for nothing, you know, for weather. And, and that's so sort of how to determine that. it is all over the lake, but you have to give us some range of expectation. Right, right. Okay. So, um, so commission to our... If you go to our website, we actually have the links under the NOI that gets you right to the NOI and the instructions on how to fill it out, what is required. And also you can get the definition of what the um, high water mark is. On the plan, we'd also need to know turbidity curtain would have to be drawn on the plan. Um, okay, well, okay, Michelle, you know, we, we've never had to draw this on there before. We had to put that, we, we're going to put all the safety, proper safety equipment in there. And then Mary comes down and we go over it and we do. I never had to draw any of that in there. Chad, we're trying to be more consistent with everyone. And this is okay. all writing. It's all on the website. It's all, in, you know, it's um, maybe if you saw us doing it a little differently earlier, we're trying to be as consistent as we can with everybody. Right. And you know what? Yes, I wasn't involved in this part in the beginning. And I took this part over, so. This is no crime going on. You'll be on the next meeting. It's whatever we got to do, off, we'll take know. care of it. Okay. So will there be equi equipment involved in this? Chad, will you have any kind of earth moving equipment involved? Yes. So you need we to make a, sure you have a we have spill, spill kit. kit. We have everything. Which also has to be on your plan. Yeah. So just a drawing of where you're going to put it so that we know where it is. Well, let me ask you this, Michelle. Um, if I put on the drawing, right? Yep. Can we move it while we're working? It's not a big backyard on the lake. I understand. So if I put on a drawing and you show up and say it's over here, and the machines with it, you know, that's what I'm asking. Well, I I'm think you can. The right so way. I, I, in the yard, I, if I recall, one side is where the wall is, and then there's a little boat ramp, and then on the right side, kind of close to the neighbors, it's a you beach. Know, you're going to be working there. Yeah. So you could find the nearest tree. Uh, over near that beach, put it there, and then you don't have to move it. What we okay. want to see is it close to where you're working and close to where the resource is. Right. Because That's... we've had situations where somebody said it's in the truck, but the truck leaves, the spill kit leaves, and the work continues. So, well, let me ask you this: can you can, can you can you tell me what close is? Ten feet, fifty feet. That's my only concern. I just don't want to get in trouble. That's why Michelle knows. I would say on on Mr. Claybert's. On the side of Mr. Claybert's house, that's near the water. On the water okay. side of the house is Perfect. close. I'll make sure that's done then. Okay. That's why I'm, I'm not, you know, trying to give you a hard time. I just want to know because not, I'm, I'm not, I, I I'm not taking it as a hard time. Right. That's, yeah. that's yeah. perfect. 
We just but don't I, want it by the street. Mary, Mary said, if I have questions, call her and ask her. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so yes, it, it'll be there under the at the back of the house, at the back, right where we're working. Perfect. But if um, I just wanted to make sure if we move it five or 10 feet left or right. It's fine. Okay. We just want it near, there in case of emergency, somebody can grab it without leaving town. Right. <laughs> and um, we also don't want someone to grab it and leave town. Good point. <laughs> so, so we mentioned turbidity curtain, um, silt fence and straw wattles, water marks. We want to know wh what kind of, what size riprap, how high it's going to go, how far back it's going to go, where the actual wall will start. And then in reading the plan, I thought I saw somewhere some three quarter inch stone. What's yeah, keeping in that between from the, going um, in the water? When we do the seawall with the big stones, just to yeah. fill in the gaps instead of mortar or something. When yeah, it's almost three quarter stone. And we're putting three quarter stone on every. What's that? How do you keep it there? Three quarter inch stone likes to walk. Right, but if it's not if it's not above the big rock. Yeah. Uh, I I would suggest. Yeah, I would suggest, Chad, that when you start installing the bottom couple of layers of that that looks like slabs of stone. Yeah. The bottom couple of layers, you nest them as closely possible and minimize the size of the spaces where the smaller stones will be. Right, and that's what I was going over with Tom is, you know, we'll be able to chip some and put them in the holes, but if there's small little gaps, like uh, your bathroom, you get it tiled. You put, more, you put mortar in there. You put grout in there. That's what we're gonna do with the three quarter stone. Just sprinkle it so it looks nice. Okay, make, make sure you make a note of that when you send us some more information. Okay. Tell us that you're gonna, that, that's your plan. That's all it is because what else do you put in between there? Right. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it's just something that it's not gonna wash the grooves out and wash the rocks out and the stones out. Right. It's something to run over. And at the bottom, we're putting all the riprap at the bottom, the same thing that we've been using. Just and that's where Tom and I was speak. Tom and I spoke about that, and Mary also, and she knows what the riprap that we use. It's anywhere from it ranges. You can't get all five inch. It's anywhere from three to eight inch. Typical. Don't they with call jagged, that with there? jagged edges to break the waves, not rounded. Okay. It all needs to be put in detail on a plan and in a written proposal as well with the notice of intent. Okay. So, so, um, is there anything else you need to know about what we want you to include there, Chad? Um, is this I, gonna be I, I in writing? Pretty much covered it. So everything we spoke about, if we cover that, are we good to go? With a pre-construction, all that. Right. Uh, is there a DEP number for this? That's, I don't think so. I haven't received anything yet. Okay. And I know they, they got it uh, back on January 21st. Okay, yeah, it's, it often takes them a month. So um, hopefully by next meeting. Okay. Right, we, we were mainly trying to just get this done. So in the springtime, you guys are gonna be busy. We can get going. Obviously we're not putting a retainer wall on the ice now. Well, but we um, just want to have everything lined up and no knowing what time of, of the year you're targeting too. Are you targeting spring? I'm trying to target before you guys raise the water. Well, we don't raise the water. Mother Nature. Well, the water comes up. That's what I mean. Right before everything melts down all the way. We were trying before winter, but we couldn't get in there that quick. Got it. Yeah, for a while there was uh, almost there was down the, uh, Mary knows the base Dan of the knows, railroad tie. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everybody's. Tom, do those railroad ties typically sit in the water? Uh, yeah, it depends on the uh, depth of the water. Uh, about a month and a half ago, the water level was down to the, the first layer of railroad ties. It varies from that up to about two feet of water. So if that so, so I would say about uh, in uh, midsummer if there's a lot of rain I would say it 
it goes up to about halfway up that. You see the picture right here? I would say it goes about halfway up. Yeah. So that does yeah. mean we'll need a chapter 91, doesn't it, Mary? For the wall, yeah, because it's sitting in the water. Yeah. Um, and so what's going to end up happening if it's, it's a slope, probably it's, the water is going to come in a little bit further. Um, and so, it, it, yeah, if you want to avoid the chapter 91, you would have to pull everything back, but which you may not want to do. Um, right. And if you look at those timbers, those are creosote soaked railroad timbers. It doesn't it doesn't matter from the perspective right, so, of chapter 91. And, if you have but, a wall or anything I, that's in the water, you have to do a chapter 91. But I didn't finish. But and for some reason the middle of it just rotted out and it's all washing out through the middle of it. Those aren't supposed to rot, but they did. They've been there for a hundred years almost. Exactly. That's what I was saying. It, I'm not saying that. Is this considered to be a wall versus a uh, banking? Um, even if you armor the banking with riprap, you're supposed to have a chapter 91 because you're putting it in, in the water. It's touching the water. So technically on Webster Lake, everyone that has any kind of non-natural shore is supposed to have a chapter 91 for their wall. And what, what, is, uh, what entails a chapter 91? more paperwork with the state so it's just right. a set of paperwork to go through with DEP and but that's I not going to have a link on the website well it does you have to get the permit oh. but no matter what wall you have there has it's just another layer of permission from the state uh, is there paperwork for the chapter 91 on the Conservation Commission website? There's a link. Yeah, it's all online. And of course, Mary's available to give gentle guidance in this. Yes. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I like that one. Sorry. <laughs> that call up for everything. So, yeah. So, so it's just one of those things you got to fill it out, and it'll be the same kind of information we're asking about what you're going to put there where you're going to put it where does it, where does it touch the water that sort of thing so if chad provides uh, me the information that, that he's going to provide you i can just add that to the chapter 91 application yes okay thank you no problem commissioners anything else that we want to point out on this one Good. Chad, uh, are you going to provide a, a list of uh, items that we need to do? What's that? Uh, you broke up. Are we, are we going to get a list of things that uh, we that you need to do, Chad? Yes, we will. Okay. We'll get that taken care of with the, in the next two weeks. Okay. Yeah. So, commissioners... Um, I need a motion to continue this to the 24th. I motion we continue 28 Bates Grove, 29 Bates Grove until February 24th. 27, wasn't it? 27th? Sure. 24th. February 24th. Yeah, whatever. February 24th. Yep. February 24th. I second okay. that motion. So Robin with the first, Dan with the second. All right, Ms. Johnson. Yes. Dr. Jewell. Yes. Mr. Duto. Yes. Ms. Shirillo. Yes. Mr. Bach, did you catch all of that? Yep. And right. see yes. Okay. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Thank we'll you. you meeting. February I'll 24th. See you on the next one. <laughs> yes, February 24th. Thank Bye, you. Chad. Bye, Tom. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Well, I'm going to stay on here because I'm up for the next one, too. Uh, so you're allowed to stay. <laughs> if this is 15 Wakefield. Yeah, so you got me on the payroll, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm leaving. Thank you. All right, Tom. Save, Tom. Tom, Tom I'll Thank give you. you a buzz in the morning.
Okay. Take care. You got it. Okay, Dan, I don't know if this is one you need to read something on, Dan. Uh, read it anyway. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is 15 Wakefield Ave in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended the Wetlands Protection Act. This public hearing is being held on a notice of intent filed by Richard Quinn for the installation of a deck and repair of an, an existing walkway at 15 Wakefield Ave in Webster. Okay. So we have Chad and do we have Rich? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Rich, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing okay. All right. Would one of you like to describe your project? Rick, Rick, I'll describe it. Okay. So what happened is he had an old boathouse. Hold on a second. Somehow. All right. He had an old boathouse and it got torn down. And we, th we thought that the permit, we could build something on it. And we did a deck over it. Mary came down. Um, she was quite upset. And I talked to Tom. We did everything we were supposed to. Pulled the permit. Paid the fee. Paid the fine. And we're just trying to move forward. Be honest with you. Yeah. So it, it, in here, the, the drawing didn't show what actually what we did do. And then as part of the DEP, I submitted a site plan, which I think this is what Mary would get up right now. And I do actually have a DEP number as well. But you'll see in this first plan here, and uh, Chad, I'll send you a copy of this. I got it done late last week. All right. Thanks, Rick. Yeah. So this here, shows the buffer zone, which is the whole house. It's a small house. It's within 100 feet of the, of, of the resource, which is the water. And you'll see on here, we have the diagram of where the boathouse actually is. It does overhang a little bit. Um, the deck will hang a little bit from the boathouse, but not by much. Um, and you also see that we do have some stairs. Uh, there are three sets of stairs. That one there goes from the, goes from the deck to the lower landing. Um, number three goes from the deck to an existing concrete slab. And then there's another set of stairs that go from the retaining wall onto the deck itself. And then separately from that, number four is a uh, 50 foot um, walkway that we, that we had that we need to repair because the water is draining into the house. So we're gonna um, repair that and go with some sort of um, porous um, pavers. Well, what we're gonna do is actually, um, it, it sunk about eight inches. So we're gonna dig down deep with the high pack in drainage and go back with the right system. Obviously, someone built a house, they didn't put the right hot pack down, everything, so it sunk and it was all going in his garage and his house, so we're trying to prevent that. Yeah, so this slide here shows, um, like I got this from the Webster GIS site that shows the flood zone. So the flood zone is actually, is, yeah, that line right there is the flood zone. So any work that we're doing is before the flood zone, so it's at least 482 feet or higher. So nothing uh, is getting impacted you know, within the water itself. And then the next slide shows more of an aerial view of what we're doing. I, I, I'm colorblind, so these colors are awful, so I'm sorry. But it just shows kind of where the- no readers. <laughs> yeah, I- but you, can see, you, can see the, you can see where the old boathouse was. You guys are all familiar with that job. Yeah, it's a 12 by 16 deck. Um, the where, is the, where is the old boathouse? The existing one is it gone? Right there. See what looks like a we, boat parking area. Okay. That's yeah, because we need before and after. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think Harry showed the before with, with the old decrepit boathouse. That, that we pulled okay, up. And you guys came down to the afters too. Yep. So that that's the boathouse right there. You can see the concrete slab on the right hand side. That's where the stairs are getting tucked into. Okay. So it's eight by 16, of which eight by 12 and 96 square feet is going over the water. Nothing is touching the water itself. Um, we just went on top of it. Nothing, no, nothing is within the flood zone either. Um, in addition, you know, Chad and his team went through and they um, put a veneer on the side of the, uh, of the wall to make it look neater and capped it with a granite slab to go on top of it to you know, prevent water from seeping into the cinder blocks. So the, the back wall of that boathouse was cinder blocks and obviously that they have holes in it. So to prevent, you know, ice and snow and water being in there and freezing, you know, we opted to put a, a concrete slab on a cinder, uh, I'm sorry, a 
Grant yeah, stuff on with the cabin, right? He also filled the cinder block holes with rebar and filled all cinder block holes with concrete. Right. And we we drilled through and we put rebar going into the pro, into the land to make sure the wall wouldn't fall. Yeah, the whole thing is much more reinforced now than, than it was with that rinky dink boathouse. And what's under the earth part of the deck? Existing earth, so it's um. We put the deck on the old the old boat house had cement foundation, so we reused that, and I put one concrete block in a footing. That's it. And then it's just dirt under the deck. No, it's, it's water. Water. No, I mean the deck. This part of the deck is over the ground. Is that just dirt? Uh, the it's concrete. We, we didn't go much over it. We went six inches over each side of the water concrete wall, the boathouse wall. Okay. Yeah, the majority of the deck is Land. either over the old concrete slab or over the water where, which used to be covered by the boathouse. Right, right. But, but, but within, so within the old boathouse boat foundation. And the concrete slab beside it. Correct. Right. Yeah. And you capped the entire wall or just the wall near the deck? The entire wall. The entire wall make it look uniform. So you've made but sure. Not, not the, I already got in trouble for the mortar. We went and cleaned it up. <laughs> but not the, the, boat, the sides of the boathouse. Did you, you didn't do the sides, right? Well, we, we cleaned as much as we could dig down 20 feet and there's still trash underneath there. That's so. Before Rick bought the house, someone was dumping all the trash beside the boathouse. I don't think that was the question. So Mary was asking if you capped any of the boathouse walls. No. No, no, no. Just so we was, we moved a section you, and they said no. You capped the entire, re I'll call it a retaining wall, yes. that ruins the length of your property, which includes be right behind that deck. Yes. We, so, we capped all that. Okay. So... Yeah. Please make sure you have three to six inches behind that wall because water should not flow over that wall into the We water. have it. <laughs> I just want to make actually, sure we're clear no, with that. Sorry to throw you under the bus, Rick, but Rick wanted it flush, and I said, no, we have to have three inches. Yeah. But <laughs> yes, that's there. I, I know. I already got reprimanded okay. for that before. There is, is there a new NOI for this? So, Karen, this um, this originally so this was a stop work. Okay, so they're ninety percent done with the work. Um, we asked them to file an NOI, uh, or Joey asked them to file an NOI. So, yes, this is a new NOI to to cover the work that is mostly done. Okay, thank and what you. happened, Michelle? We were in, under a misunderstanding when they took the boat ho house down. We thought we were still under that permit. Yeah, we should have. We weren't. We yeah. weren't. We paid the fine <laughs> daily. Yeah. We, we, we're, we we got past that. We are past it. Yeah, exactly. So, so it, it, it's more done than this, too, because we, um, we Chad and his team put the rest of the railings up on the side as well as coming down from this from the um step, which is what we talked about during the last conversation. Yeah. Just again, just to finish and make it you know for safety reasons. And this one obviously there's the steps going down from the deck to that concrete slab too. And those have railings as well. Okay. Yeah like do this mind, do you mind putting up the NOI? Because I, I think that um, it was missing some uh, important information. Thank you. Is there a page that you remember, Michelle? I think it's the next page. Karen. Or, or Karen, I'm sorry. That's OK. okay. Um, so I, I want to make sure in my own head, there is no bank being disturbed. It's just land under a water body. Correct. That's it. Okay. Right, because the bank, I mean, that concrete wall was already there, I think. OK. And it's it was unique. more of a repair to make it Dress it up. Okay. Just scroll down a little bit more, please.
You want the next page? I think I think it's it, I think I remember it was item D that was missing. Okay, right there. Buffer zone and resource area impacts. Nope, go down. Yep. All right, we're good on that one. I'm sorry. Keep going. Okay, keep going. I think it was D. Oh, under these? D. Yep. Oh, none of those were checked off. And C, none of that was checked off. Right. So this should be no, no. Well, they should modify it. And then yeah. the plans. I know at the last moment I saw some plans come up, and that's what we were just looking at a minute ago. Yeah, that's a site plan I submitted to the um, uh, DP. Where's the site plan? This is it right here. So the existing and the proposed uh, contours aren't showing? On the next one? On any of them. No, on this one, it shows the contours. Oh, okay, because right there. Okay, there aren't any alterations to the existing conditions because you're not um, moving dirt. Correct. Right. Yeah, there's okay. no grading. All right, I got it. Thank you. Yeah, this really could have been done as an RDA, except for the fact that he's over the water, probably. <laughs> and and which, 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 I wouldn't, which I wouldn't be over the water because the, you know, the boat house didn't exist. Right, that had a roof on it. Uh, but this does fall under a chapter 91 because it is not yeah. over the water. Come on, really? Yeah, I and you're going to register your dock anyway. So put them together and put them in. The so actually, I had a question well, about the dock. I'll on this one. <laughs> so any, stru any structure? The, the, the dock has nothing to do with it. Chapter 91, just to clarify. And that's cool. section 905 of chapter 91, if you want to read the law itself. I trust you. Hmm, um, thank you. <laughs> so regarding the dock, though, um, I, I was able to find evidence of us having a dock uh, prior to 1983. Made out of the same thing? What's that? Exactly the way it is now. It's a different dock, but it's in the same spot. It's coming right off that concrete what slab. Layout size, yes, different dock. You still have to do, you still have to do a chapter 91. You just yeah. got to prove the age of it with pictures and things. I thought it was grandfathered. If I had one, then that, it was grandfathered in. It does get grandfathered in by the state, but you still have to go through the application. All right, so I can put both in the same form. Yeah, so chapter 91. So I believe you can include both the deck, the deck dock, and the dock. All right. Just to be very clear and clean on this, this is an exception to the rule because canter leaving a deck over the water is not something that I well, personally think is the right thing to do on the lake. Not canter leaves over the water, the, the post run. There's don't it don't go with the technicality there you're still over okay. the water so building okay. decks over the water should be the exception to dock policy on webster lake I appreciate that. I thought we don't want, we don't want everyone starting to take their decks over the water. Out there? yeah i got yeah, it. It. Not that this one is is a legitimate exception because not putting the deck Putting that deck makes it a safety hazard. Agree, but it is an exception, so I think it's important that we're clear about that. Well, when we when we write it up, I would uh, make sure that we include the fact that it is a safety issue, just so that we have it documented that this was why we are making the exception. Don't so to walk out that wall. Yeah. <sighs> So commissioners, are there other questions related to 15 Wakefield? Michelle, is Dan Do we want to have some uh, native shrubs planted to provide additional wildlife habitat and to kind of in the spirit of doing a replication, even though this isn't really a, anyway, it's an idea. I know it's a small property, but a few shrubs could be beneficial along the shore. So where, where, would you, where, can you grab the diagram again, the, 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 the photo? Yeah, I, I think there's very little space along the shoreline that to do something like that. 
Um, I was just thinking one, maybe, but whatever you guys think. It's just a suggestion. Oh, perhaps by the stairs of the deck, right? Right between the front. When you come down to the left side of the steps, yeah. between yeah, the so steps and the wall. Yeah, right where Mary was kind of playing. Here or here, which is over here? Either one of those, because no one's going to walk there. Right. Right, and that would be lovely if you would agree to put some plants there. Something low maintenance, low I, growing. I agree. <laughs> I'll, I'll put them in. <laughs> so a, a, shrub, a, small, a small shrub or something. Nothing that yeah. gets okay. too big. You got it. Uh, and do you have a do we have a DP number? Yes, we do. <laughs> wow, that's so unusual. Here, do you want it? I have it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm trying to pick up the code of mess here. Work with me. <laughs> well, the DEP number pushes us in different directions as far as procedures are concerned. Right. So um, but yes, we'll plan something, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, Commissioners, are there other questions or concerns? Good. Uh, are there any comments from anyone else in the Zoom meeting? Because it is an open meeting and this is a... So I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so does that mean, I know I have to fill out chapter 91, but once the ground thaws, do we have to go ahead and finish the, the walkway too? Or is so what happens is once we approve your NOI, you have to wait, I think it's 10 days in case someone wants to appeal it. Okay. We're giving you permission to proceed with the walk. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry, so what was that, we, Michelle? We're, you're allowed to proceed with the walk while you're working on your chapter 91. Okay, but I have to wait 10 days? Yeah, you just have to wait until you get all your paperwork from Mary, and then it's a 10-day appeal period. Okay. So you don't want to do anything in there, and then after that, you're good, because you have your number. Now, Perfect. Michelle, can, yeah. can, can, you, can you tell him that we're going to wait for the ground thaw too, because he'll be calling me in 10 days? <laughs> well, my, my suggestion, as far as construction <laughs> is concerned, is that it's really not that sturdy if you try to do it with frozen ground. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not a can, we, can we finish that last railing on the deck? So is my concern. 10 <laughs> days after your NOI is approved and you have your paperwork, you can proceed. Okay. Dad, you're killing me. She already not, said no. Not nine days, not seven days, after 10 days. Okay. Just the rules. <laughs> gotcha. So, Chad, I'll let you know when I get the documents from, uh, from Mary. Yeah, and then we'll come down and make it straight for you. We haven't even approved it yet. Well, I know. Allow us to proceed. <laughs> so, commissioners, would someone like to make a motion to close the public hearing if you're happy with 15 Wakefield? I motion we close the public hearing because I'm happy. I'll make that motion. Wakefield. <laughs> <laughs> Robbing with the first. I'm very happy with, it. with the second. Very happy. All right, Ms. Johnson. Oh, my goodness. Ms. Johnson. I'm sorry, Mary's got to take roll call. Everybody has to let Mary talk. Dr. Jewell. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Mr. Duteau. Yes. Ms. Cirillo. Yes. Mr. Bach. Yes. Ms. Johnson? She seconded. She's mm -hmm. muted. I think she's mad I first did. I think she wanted to beat me to the punch. That's why. I'm a data copy. That's a yes. Okay. All right. So, gentlemen, um, your project has been approved. You have the parameters. I expect to see you back with your chapter 91, showing us your permit for chapter 91 at some close to now future date. On a, on a procedural basis, we only just closed the public hearing. We did not technically. Yeah, we're doing the NOI. Yeah. Yes, well, you know, the vice chair. No. I need a motion. 
I motion we, what do we do with the NLRB? We, we issue an order of conditions. I'm sorry. I motion we issue a border of conditions on this very happy uh, 15 Wakefield Ave project. Also, happy Monday, too. Fred with the second. See, I had to get I had to get a second in at least once tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a competition. All right, Dr. Jewell. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Duto. Yes. Ms. Shirillo. Yes. Mr. Bach. Yes. All right. Thank you both very much. And thank you guys so much. Yeah, I appreciate it. Mary, thanks for your help along the way. You guys all enjoy your week. See you Stay guys. Safe. I'll, I'll see you during the week, Mary. You know that. <laughs> thank you. All right. You guys have a good one. Thanks. All right. Moving on to 88 Douglas Road, the installation of ground mount solar panels and a rooftop solar system. Have anyone representing 88 Douglas Road? Yes, Hi, my name is Kristen. Hi, Kristen. And then I have somebody from my design team here to answer your questions as well. His name is Eric. Yes. Hi, my name is Eric. I'm from uh, I'm the supervisor of the design team at Vision Solar. All right. Let me just pull that up. Kristen and Eric. Yes. Um, we were there at that location today, and the man there told us that the plan had changed and there were not going to be any solar panels ground mounted. They were only going to be roof mounted panels. Uh, is that your understanding of the current plan? Um, I, I only have a record of there being um, panels on the ground only and then ground and house, but we're, I think we're going with the ground and house is the most recent. Okay. Yeah, he was very, we questioned him. He was very clear that he had instructed, uh, he said he had told you that you know, he did not want the ground mounted panels. Uh, but, I, you know, we're, so I'm just trying to determine what the current plan is. Hate to put you on the spot, but we <laughs> we need to know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Kristen, do you have anything in on that? I, I only I, see. My apologies. I only see. I only have the the ground. I was not aware well, of. I think we can maybe go through with the hearing, and then at your least, because I don't think we're going to close on this. So we'll come up with our comments and then you can go back to him and, and figure out, he can figure out what he wants to do. Um, if there, I believe if you drop the whole ground mount and just mm -hmm. do the roof mount, then, and you're not cutting any trees, then you wouldn't even need a permit with us. Um, but if you are cutting trees, uh, then then we'd, we'd still need to talk to you. So right. Okay. Excuse me, Mary. Yes. I don't. I don't see any resource areas identified. So I'm looking at this, wondering why they're here. Right. So yeah, there's a few things the plans are missing. So let's just back up. Let's back up and start at the beginning. Um, Kristen or Eric, do you want to explain what this project is and perhaps walk us through the plan? Yeah, I, I can do that. Um, so the first page you have up right now, um, is that the first page? Yeah. Yep. Um, so that's gonna be just be like a general, like kind of like a cover page. Um, it's gonna go over like the, um, what type of panels are being installed, how many are being installed, um, what type of inverters we're using and how many, um, what's the uh, overcurrent protection is needed and what kind of um, overcurrent protection we're using. Um, got like general information about the customer, um, their address, uh, like the total system size, um, 
And then the, the big um, square in the right, top right, that's going to be like a sort of like a, a site plan. We just, it gets a little bit bigger and more in depth on the next page. If you go down to the next page. So, so it gets more in depth from the perspective of how the solar panel works. Uh, it's just more, it'll, if you look at it, it just kind of like points out certain things that you couldn't, were too small on the first page. Okay. And I still don't small see too. So from, from our perspective, we're looking for sort of the ground plan. So in this plan, we'd expect to see a delineation of a wetland, um, some clear indication of what trees are affected by this plan, what, if, if any grading is happening under or around the solar panels, what will be um, <coughs> a big solar array. I know there's areas where you need access for maintenance. And then oftentimes there's a planting mix of some type to keep ground stabilization. So the Conservation Commission is looking for those kinds of things and erosion controls that might have to be installed to um, prevent erosion during the construction and how the construction is actually going to work. So from our perspective, this is a very, very specific to installing the solar panels, but not specific to how it, infect, how it affects the environment. Okay, so you're really, you're kind of asking for like a um, environmental survey to be done. No, we're asking for, yeah, that's kind of way over the top, but no, uh, we need a delineation of your wetland because on this plan, there's no indication of a wetland and we know there's a wetland there. So we need to know exactly where it is. Yeah. You, would, you would need to indicate on that plan how far your solar panels are from the wetland. Okay. Instance, you know, because looking at the site, it looks like they're going to be very, very close. So we want to know how close. Yeah, Dan and I measured off today and just from eyeballing the plans, he, Dan is standing pretty much at the top of the slope to the wetland. That was where we got the edge of the panels to go, just kind of an eyeball measure thing. Um, there is, um, if you're not familiar, there is a GIS which shows the wetland area in the yard. You can use that as a reference and, and um, but really, uh, I know I would be comfortable. I don't know how the board feels, but that the, if you go along and just the top of the bank here is pretty much the wetland edge. It's, it's pretty clear when they built the house, they kind of smooth the area out. And, uh, that's pretty much the wetland edge. I would be comfortable with that. If you didn't want to hire a wetland scientist for this, I don't know how the board feels. It, it's not a complicated project or a difficult to determine wetland so yeah the wetland the wetland area is is pretty obvious even with all the snow and ice there yeah okay so pretty much as long as we keep it off the wetland it'll get rid of a lot of the issues you're having um no we have jurisdiction of within a hundred feet of the wetland so okay. I don't want any confusion. You can't put a solar panel right up against the wetland. Okay. So currently, in my opinion, and I'm only one member of the board, eight feet is too close. Okay. But we need to understand exactly where you're expecting as far as measurements are concerned, how they're going to be arranged, what kind of erosion controls you're going to put to protect the wetland, how you're going to stabilize the soil after everything's installed, and exactly what trees are coming down to allow for the solar panels to get enough sun. This is a pretty wooded lot. Right, If I was looking at the, Dan and I were looking at the back and wondering if some of these would have to come down, these trees. Um, another, another thing you want to mention is uh, in looking at the plans, it looks like the support posts for the ground mounted panels are going to be like eight feet into the ground. So I assume that's some kind of post hole digger that's going to dig holes. And so if you're bringing a piece of equipment in there, we need to know um, what you're bringing and so on. You know, we need to know how you're going to be installing this. Yeah. I got you. Okay. 
if there's any kind of earth movement, if you're going to be storing some of the dirt while you're working, where it's going to be, how it's protected, that kind of thing. And okay. just the basic, there should be a north arrow on this, just so we can get a sense of which direction the trees are going to be removed in. And we can put that in relationship to where the wetland is. OK. Yeah, sorry. We usually do include a compass. Um, I, yeah. that, just particular project, I guess, just th there isn't one. Uh, I, I, I just want to emphasize what we're looking at here is the original plan. And we were told today that that's no longer the current plan. So. <laughs> If, if that turns out to be true, if all if the only solar panels being mounted are on the roof of the house, then um, just let us know and uh, this conversation is over. We're done because it, the roof is out of our jurisdiction. Is the house the trees? <laughs> Wait, if the trees could be, is it within a hundred feet of a wetland? Yes, the trees are. The trees are. If, if it's on the roof, we weren't sure if any of these trees along here would need to be removed. It's yeah. just a yeah, much that, easier um, conversation if it's just the house. Yeah, you can. Yeah. you can see in. The, you can see in that bottom picture. That's me standing there, and I'm mm -hmm. right about at the top of the bank, going into the wetland. So it's not very far from the house. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Excuse yeah, me, I was, Mary. I was, I was unaware if they had talked to somebody about uh, moving the panels onto the roof. So, I will definitely talk to someone about that tomorrow. Um, uh, other than that, I don't. If we put them on the roof, uh, those trees don't look high enough to like affect the solar too much. Maybe a little bit on the okay. south side, but I, I guess you would have to tell us that. Yeah, yeah I can't, I think... I, from the pictures, it's, uh, it doesn't really look like they would affect it too much. Maybe yeah, I think it, this is the east side here. I think that's east. Yes. Yeah. If, if um, there is no digging and putting the panels on the ground, would this then change to an RDA as opposed to an NOI? Uh, it could even be done, if there's no digging and no trees cut, it could just be done as an admin approval. You okay. Even really, it's not a very complex product. Um, and that's actually how they started, unfortunately. So they, they've done an admin, they've done an RDA, they've done everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we could go back to level one. Right. All right. So commissioners, any more advice and direction you'd like to offer? I'm good. Kristen, Kristen and Eric, do you have any questions? Um, um, no, I think I'm okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm also good. All right. So I assume you would like a continuation so we can talk about it again? Please, yes. Commissioners, I need a motion. Make your motion to continue us till uh, February 24th. That is sufficient? Yes. Yes. Motion, second, who's second? I'll second. I'll second. Clarissa with the second. All right, uh, Dr. Jewell. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Duteau. Yes. Ms. Chirillo. Yes. Mr. Bach. Yes. All right, so. We are continuing this discussion for 88 Douglas Road to February 24. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both. Okay, moving on. 49 Arkwright Road and 30 oh Worcester Road. I believe there's Glenn a request for a continuation on this one. Uh, Glenn Kowalski through the chairman is here. Hi, Mr. Kravoski, how are you? Very fine, thank you very much. Uh, good year to y'all. I'm not sure if we talked since it began. I, I just wanted, if I could, to the chairman, just uh, briefly state why I'm asking for another continuance. Absolutely, please. Thank ahead. you. We've been putting, the, because this has to go into the environmental monitor and it falls under ecological restoration, Mr. Thomas Rabula of DEP, 
um, stated that this was required. So we did send some information in today <laughs> relative to, so we have to prove that we're not affecting the habitat or environment by the project we're doing. So we've been working all summer and fall and winter to show the shutting off of Webster Lake completely and then the opening of the gate nearly fully or partway just in August it, it was uh, totally dry or coming out and then well, and it's been going on throughout the summer we did support also that with the with the deed for the lake dam which appears to allow the owner of the dam to do this type of uh, opening and closing fully open and then shut completely off. We've also worked with Arkwright Road to show the major gully erosions from July and August and then the filling of those gullies, uh, which when it flushes down, that enters into where we're looking to take the 88 cubic yards out of the brook. And that appears to be the major factor in creating the delta, uh, ongoing creation of the delta, right upgrading of the railroad bridge, that stone arching bridge. That was the railroad uh, bridge at one time, and now the back entrance to Tony uh, Leo's pit. So we still have a put it, are putting together the photos for the erosion gullies, the, then the dumping of the gravel to smooth them out, and then uh, the deltas in the brook to show that the work we're doing to remove the 88 cubic yards of uh, material that was left behind in, in approximately 1972 when the original uh, Sam Slater Arkwright Road Bridge was removed, that stone bridge, and then the gravel that was, uh, the stones were taken away, the cut stone, but the gravel dropped to the bottom. We've explained this before. And that's what we were looking to remove so that we would reestablish re the original gradient that Sam Slater had created back in about 1812 when he made this seven angle man made spruce. So we're nearly complete with the photo exhibit to DEP showing that our minimum amount of work will compare what's going on to the brook and the and what's coming out of the lake dry then full blast uh, our work has negligible effect compared to what this brook goes through on a monthly basis and uh, that should uh, help the dp and the environmental monitor wherever comments to show that our the minor effect is we're nearly complete with that document but we did send you in some of that information today so i appreciate that you can possibly give me a continuous until we wrap up the last part of the Arkwright road photo documentation of uh in the delta again in, in the brook thank you thanks glenn how much time it makes sense for you and your team I think my office did give a, uh, I hope they gave a date and then approximately it was a, approximately a month away. Mary might have it. We did email it uh, over. Yeah, so, I don't think there was a date, but we can do it. Okay. Uh, 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 I'll, I'll ask, no offense, uh, for two months, only because we're not going to be doing this work until we're sure that the brook is going to be dry due to, hopefully, unlike last year, unless we have another year like last year, we would be normally looking at doing this work in July, August, when we know that the lake generally would be down. It's not uh, little to no flow coming out of the lake. Uh, we can't rely on the owners or the people that control the dam to just shut it off and, and, uh, for that four hours. The maximum this is going to take is for the mini excavator or 75G John Deere, that type of excavator. So, uh, so it's about a four hour project, but we want to make sure the brook is at its lowest flow when we do it. We already did receive negative determination from the Conservation Commission, but because it requires an order of conditions when you're in the water, DEP forced us into this NOI. Glenn, Glenn two months would take us to April 7th. Do you, think the, do you think the water levels at that time in the spring would be acceptable for your work? Well, well last June was a dry month. I think 1.65 off the top. We just looked at NOAA. And then it started raining in July, August. So it, it, in two months, we will clearly have everything in the monitor, all the information, the rest of it to you people and to DEP. In April, two months from now, we appreciate it if you can give us two months. Thank you. That would be April 4th, Michelle. Yep. I'm writing it down. Thank you also. So 
Commissioners, I'm looking for a motion. A motion, we uh, have a continuance for 49 Arkwright Road and 30 Worcester Road for April 4th. A second. Thank you. So with the second, so we have Robin and then Clarissa. Uh, Dr. Jewell. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Duto. Yes. Ms. Shirillo. Yes. Mr. Bach. Yes. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Glenn. We really appreciate it. No, oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Sure. Thanks, safe, Glenn. All right, take care now. Thank you. All righty. So now we're moving on to new business. And we, the first item we have is 12 Kenneth. Chapter 91 dock permit. Do we have anyone here representing 12 Kenneth? Uh, I'm here. I'm sorry, your name is? My name is Henry Lane. Thank you. I, think Mr. I think Mr. Petrillo was also here. Yep, I'm here. All right, let's just bring this up. Well, let me let me jump in here for a second, Mr. Lane, and, and ask you, um, we were there along with the representative from the DEP a while back, and the last I knew when we were leaving, that representative from DEP said that they would um, consider the issue and make a ruling and get back to us, and so far we have not heard anything, have you? We have not, but we'd like to move ahead anyway. It's a, little, it's a little bit confusing, and I guess it partly on my part, because I wasn't involved in the original uh, filing for the notice of intent or the filing of the notice of intent uh, that resulted in the um, order conditions that was uh, issued last year. But the, sort of the dilemma we have is that when the notice, when the order of conditions was issued last year, it provided for the, for the wall that was built, it also provided for a dock. Um, Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, depending on how you look at it, uh, after that was that, or contemporaneously perhaps with that uh, notice of intent, the, the configuration of the dock changed a little bit. So the dock that we're currently proposing is not exactly the same as the dock that was uh, approved in the notice of intent. So. Um, you know, we started the licensing process under Chapter 91, and we did the preliminary filing uh, showing the, the dock as we proposed it. Uh, but then going back through the records, we note that it's not exactly the same dock that was approved by the Notice of Intent. So we're sort of a catch-22. We, we couldn't really proceed with the, with the uh, proposed dock that's, that uh, was filed with the preliminary uh, licensing material uh, because it didn't uh, match exactly what was shown on the plan that was submitted with the notice of intent. So I guess the question we have now is, you know, what, how do you want us to proceed? We can ordinarily, you know, if, if the change isn't too large, we ask the Conservation Commission to amend its notice of intent to reflect the current plan, or conceivably we could file an entirely new notice of intent or a request for a determination. Um, so I guess that's really the point at where we are, you know, what's, what's, you know, what's uh, the best approach here? A new uh, request for a determination or just a simply an amendment to the existing not uh, order of conditions to reflect the uh, current doc proposal? I don't, I don't see any reason to file something new like an RDA in this particular instance. So would you like to explain what the new doc configuration is? Uh, that's what you see on the screen. <clears throat> okay. Uh, these are standard foot wide docks, I assume? Yeah. Okay. And is there a boat lift or a jet ski lift of any type? No. The, total the original plan. 
just so we can see what the different, how much of a difference there is. Whoops, sorry. I don't think we approved the doc in the original NOI. That's sort of not how we've done it in the past. We usually require someone to go through chapter 91 with a doc permit. Well, the first thing we, ha it has to be approved by the CONCOM for environmental reasons before they can submit. So. Yes, I understand yeah, we, how it works, but I don't think we approved a previous doc configuration on this particular property. Oh, well, that's why I wanted to see what, what was actually in the plans that we approved. And I, right, I think so that's, <laughs> I, 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 uh, as I say, I, I apologize. I was not involved in the original filing. I did review the filing and the notice of intent, uh, the order of conditions expressly says that it covers the dock. That, and that's what I was, that's the theory I was uh, well, uh, the, operating under. Normally what we do is we were including language to say, you must file for a chapter 91 for your dock. So. Well, doc which, which, which we've done. We started that process and that's why you have the uh, notice from what the, the, the uh, chapter 91 notice. But the, but the catch 22 we ran into is that we can't get the final application without the order of conditions. And I didn't want to file it with an order of conditions that was based on a different dock configuration because uh, I don't think that would be, that would be fair. Uh, but, but the order of conditions does specifically say it covers the dock. So that, you know, I, I've sort of got to get those two together so that the order of conditions reflects the dock as we're currently proposing it. So, so the current dock, how, what's the distance from the farthest point out on Mr. Petrillo's property and the other side of the cove? Do you know? I don't. Uh, because by chapter 91 standards, you can't be any more than one quarter of the distance from shore to shore with any dock. So I don't have a good feel for that distance. I, I, th I think the plan shows, I'm not sure I, I get the exact question. I think it's 18 feet from the, uh, yeah, from, that, that, from that drainage uh, easement there. That, that is what it says, yes. No, um, that's what, not. That's not the question. So Mr. Petrillo is in a cove, correct? Correct. And so when you look directly out from Mr. Petrillo's property, you do see the other side of the cove, correct? I think you just see open water. Not from the war. Yeah. Um, Can we bring up GIS, please? Yeah. Uh, Working to the other I, side. The, Michelle, I think if you're looking out from Mr. Patrol's property, looking straight away, right. you're looking at the opposite shore, which is probably 300 yards away. Right. It's, it's not. It's not the little cove that includes number ten and number eight. So you're telling me the dock doesn't protrude into that cove at all? Well, no, it, it definitely protrudes into the cove. Yeah. So, Wayne, I can't help but ask you, do you, don't you think that's awfully close to the neighbor? I know you, and it's, it's such a disappointing, sad uh, thing. Yeah, it, it is very close it, because of the contours of the, of the uh, shore there. It's very difficult to accommodate everybody. Right. I, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that we can work out but, something that will accommodate everybody. But wasn't that original dock a little bit more neighborly and nicer? I'm not going to get into every NOI, every foot, every inch, but it just seems like it's real. You know, and I, you and I have had long conversations, and I have deep, deep respect for you. Uh, I just think it's just you know, letter of the law in this case. Come on. I, I, I agree completely. I think the neighbors have to reach some kind of an accommodation that everybody can live with. Um, I'd like to jump in here for a second, Mr. Lane, and refer to something you mentioned a minute ago. In the original NOI, the order of conditions does say that the order of conditions includes the chapter 91 permit. That's not an approval. That's saying that one of the conditions of the order of conditions is that you get chapter 91 permit. Um, we understand that. We're in a process of doing that. Yeah. So I, I don't say, know. Yeah. So I don't, I, I, I don't think that in the 
original NOI we ever actually, the commission ever actually approved the dock that was there at the time. All right, so we, the commission probably erred in that sense. We should have made a note that the, well, they approved the plans for the wall, the dock conceptual is not approved, that we should have noted that. But, and I think Mr. Lane makes a good point that that's why it's confusing. But yeah, I, I do not believe the commission ever discussed the dock in the meeting or made any comments on it. So it's it's not you already have you're submitting a new application for doc, a new permit application. So um, with a new configuration, so we're kind of starting from scratch there. So that's okay. Yeah, and that's why I'm here. I, I just you know I just I we're happy to do whatever you would like us to do. You just got to give us some direction so we know we you know what we're doing. Okay. So Mary, can you measure? Oh, can we I'll go back. Sort of go about where this dock would be and oh. what the distance would be. Did you want th this measurement or you want out how far the dock goes? Well, it, there, there's a requirement that you can't be more than one quarter the distance across, right? Yeah. And it, to me, the, the dock would be about where the property line is, right? I'm not, yeah, this, I don't it's know like that. 18.4. 18, 18 feet off the adjoining property, I think. Colby, right. is this, this wall is not yours, right? No, that's, property... that's, the, that's the state's uh, drainage easement. Right, so we that's start good. here, right, when we're drawing. Right, and that's and correct. We go to about here. Right. Okay. That's 64 feet. Okay. So about one third of the way down, if it's 18 feet, is where the dock would start, correct? Right. And so that dock would come out into the cove and land about, it's like three, did I see it was like 300 square feet? What was the square footage on the dock or the length on the dock? Looks 30, like 32, 37, 38 feet-ish. Twenty-four. So this is. I don't. I don't believe this is the approved configuration for the other dock. Oh, if right. you if you look uh, on the uh, plan, it appears to show the dock coming out uh, from the land parallel to the uh, property line. That's so pretty much. Like, yeah. So you're not going in the same direction as his plan. No, we're going parallel to that easement. Yeah, more like that. Yeah, go a little higher. OK. A little higher. All right, so that implies you're out of the cove. And so there's no problem with the shore to shore item. Right, that's, that's our understanding. Yeah, I can see it now. The GIS helps a lot. And we also work. have the, the um, 12 or the 10 Kenneth plans, which show and some pictures that they have taken. Oh, I can find the right ones. <laughs> Was that a, did we have a picture at some point where the docks were almost touching the perceived docks? Yes, we have pictures of this stuff. The we have the yeah, site visits that were practically touching, even as existing with the, with the U. That's why I like the was, first one. That was neither, in that case though, when we were there, neither one was, a permitted dock. Yeah. Right. That, that's a that's a photograph of a of the dock that we're proposing, and it, as you can see, it almost touches the end of the existing uh, dock at Ten Kenneth. Let me let me say this now, Mr. Lane. Um, the the that's the old dock, the the original dock there at Ten Kenneth, and they have a plan to put a dock with a different configuration themselves. So, um, excuse, me. excuse me, Dan, one second. Mary, I think it's the Kenneth 12A SBLT file that's in the um, document center. Sorry, this might help. The one, their actual approved one? Um, yeah, I'm looking under 10 and 12 Kenneth Ab docks, and there's something called Kenneth 12 as built. And that looks like it shows both, both dock configurations. 
Great, there we go. But it, this isn't the approved doc, though. That's what's there right now. And their approved doc oh, yeah. is, my... this is their actual approved doc. And, and that show, actually, this is, shows, I don't know that that shows the neighbor's doc in the correct configuration or not. Maybe that would be about right, I guess, actually. So their approved doc is the U, remember it's a U shape and not the straight. Right. Okay, sorry, Dan, I interrupted you. Yeah. Before. No, uh, I, I was just going to say to Mr. Lane that, you know, we look at the chapter 91 application to see if there's any wetlands resources issues, but um, it's up for the DEP to decide, like here we have a potential conflict in space, and it's up to the DEP to decide if, if either 10 or 12 is allowed to build the dock they propose, given the potential conflict. So what we what would happen is you would submit you talk to us if we have no problem environmentally, you submit your application and we can submit to the DEP any comments we might have on on the two proposed docks, and the DEP will decide what you need to do. Why right. not do? No, I I I think I understand. Right. So uh, so. Actually, we can't tell you that you have to do one thing or not do something else. Um, that's up to DEP to decide. We can only tell them our thoughts on the matter. Right, and that's, I guess that's what I'm asking for. I, I've got to get something I can give DEP that indicates that um, there's no environmental issues with the proposal. Well, I, I mean, personally, in a note to DEP, I would express my concern for navigation. No, I understand. That's definitely something we have to address and sort out, and we're in that process already. So, right. so I guess, as I say, the question in my mind is. Does it make more sense for us to ask for an amendment to the existing order of conditions to reflect this stock configuration, or should we be filing a new uh, RDA? There's no reason to file a new RDA. So traditionally, the way that we handle this um, is through our approval to your application for Chapter 91, because you're presenting us with the way the doc is proposed. And then Mary communicates that through to the folks in at chapter 91 in DEP. Mary, is there any reason to believe that wouldn't work for this particular NOI? Um, yeah, I mean, we can do as I typically have done, which is to write a letter um, saying that we, you know, our comments on the dot configuration and our issues. And so it's kind of like a minor modification. Um, if because of the sensitivity with the neighbors, it's felt that amendment, an amendment would be necessary, you know, we can certainly do that too. Um, you know, you know, you just notify your abutters and, and request the amendment. So I think that's, that's really in your court or maybe that I know the neighbors are on the line, maybe they have an opinion as what they would like to see here as well. Did they hear you? Maybe they don't want to talk right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, hi, hi, good, good evening. Uh, Bill Clardy, uh, owner of 10 Kenneth Ave. And um, I, I, you know, I'd like to say that, uh, you know, in good faith, we've gone through the permitting process. It's been, it's been a difficult one because of the uh, lack of cooperation uh, with, with respect to uh, access to our property. Um, you know, we, we've, tr we've tried to work this out, uh, with my neighbor and I, um, but the configuration next door at 12 Kenneth keeps changing and it keeps, uh, encroach encroaching more and more on our shoreline. So, um, and I, and I also need to note, and I know the commission does is, is in receipt from a letter, uh, from DEP waterways that uh, the Arabutter received on or about July 12th 
essentially telling him that he needed to remove this structure because it was a navigational issue. Um, that was a 60 day notice. That 60 day uh, notice has come and gone. Um, and, you know, here we are, uh, the middle of February, and we're still talking about this, but yet that dock that was, uh, was ordered removed essentially by DEP waterways is, is still in the water and being utilized. So, so, so to, to summarize, um, based on the current configuration that they're proposing, this dock is essentially in the middle of the cove. It's pulled away from that wall uh, and that wall in and of itself is also an issue um, that in fact, I have uh, a, a Glenn, if, if you're on the line, I know you uh, had an opportunity to take a look at the issues with the, uh, to, with the, with the wall and I'm, I'm bringing this up at this time because I think it will ultimately impact how he was going to place his dock in the future. And, and, and yes. Glenn, Glenn, are you there? Glenn Thank you, Bill. Through the chairman, I am online. And yes, we did file paperwork today with the commission. And uh, when we were with DEP, let's be clear, unless there was another DEP meeting, it was over the appeal by your neighbor of your RDA, not right. we weren't for the neighbor. And let's uh, also be clear to Mr. Lane that the order of conditions that was issued was in early 2000, not in 21. And uh, so we would uh, want to share what we sent to Mary today, if she wants to share with Mr. Lane and the abutter at 12, you can, because this will be this information sent to DEP and CONSCOM about the violation of the order and the amendment. We will file paperwork with the Conservation Commission, asking the commission and DEP to look at the multiple multitude of violations on this property in relation to the order of conditions, which I laid out every condition that the applicant at 12 has violated. And then we would ask, because you, I believe was re were required to file an RDA. Well, then I would say that because the, this gentleman on 12 should also have to file an RDA in that amendment to the order, if the, if the, plan originally back in early 20 was not reflective of the wharf that the gentleman at 12 was going to put up. Well, then, then we could see either an amendment because, uh, but then if, again, if that wharf is larger than what's out there now and has more impact of shading of the land on the water body, then it wouldn't even fall into an amendment. It would be a, either a new notice of intent or at a minimum that Mr. Clarity had to do would be an RDA. But when you alter more resource area, uh, if you, we read the policy for amending, for amending, you cannot, you cannot, you have to file a new notice of intent. If we're gonna take it that the wharf on the original plan in early 2000 was, uh, was part of the order of conditions and not just something that the commission uh, said, you know, yes, you have to file a chapter 91 as part of the order. We're requiring you to file chapter 91. And I believe that's what the commission, as uh, Mr. Duto said, is normally what you'll put in there. Yes, here's your order conditions for everything you want, but here you have to file a, a chapter 91 because you're subject to chapter 91. And I, and I take it that that's what that language was. So there was no approval of what showed on the plan in early. And don't, please don't get me wrong. I believe it was 320. 20 was the plan date. But again, I, in my reading of the document in front of me, I have an order of conditions dated in two of 20. So I, I clearly see, I have to look at the documents and ask my office, how do we get a plan dated after the order of conditions came out? And, unless I have my dates here on, but let's just say early 20 is when the plans from HS and T in the order of conditions came out. And then there was the amendment that was a, uh, as I put it in my document, a falsehood. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll bring this all forward and force this to become forward, the violations of the order by filing our own RDA on, and asking the commission and DEP to look at the violations on this property. I, I, let me jump in here, thank, thank you, Glenn. Um, but 
I think right now we should get back to Mr. Lane's original query, which is um, what should he do right now about a chapter 91 permit re application for the proposed dock, which is kind I of a, think. and um, thank, I, I, thank you. Yeah, I, I think unless this commission has any objection on wetlands resource issues to the dock, then he just goes ahead and files that application. We'll see what DEP says. Uh, if I could, through the chairman and to you, Mr. Duto, don't you normally approve the design? It, it, this is what I've been hearing because I listen to your yeah. hearings quite often Mondays. Approve the design, tentatively approve it, and then you send it off to Chapter 91 or have the applicant then send it off. So I thought you'd be seeing through the RDA process, which I keep hearing that you people forcing people to do an RDA, we get, we, we, we tentatively approve it. Uh, okay. Stamp it. Okay. And then it goes off to chapter 91. I hear you saying now, just send it off to chapter 91. Oh, so, so let me clarify a little bit. Thank you. If someone has an open NOI or a project, they're building a house. We try to wrap the chapter 91 in by requesting they file a chapter 91. So then they typically mm -hmm. come back to us. We discuss the doc, we discuss everything related to it, and then send a letter to chapter 91 saying, we've had the conversation, this is what we think. So that they don't have to go through a separate RDA process. We request that people on the lake that aren't doing something that requires an NOI, like building a house, that they come through us with an RDA to get their dock approved. Does that make sense? I see. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Sure. Yes, um, Michelle. Glenn, can I ask you a question? Mr. Clarity mm. made a comment when he handed off to you that some of the items within your, your letter related to the property would change the way docks were configured. Is there anything to that? It, do you believe that there's some change that could happen to the wall structure or something related to their property that would make this current application moot because the connection to land would be different? Uh, clearly the, the, the connection would be different because the original wall was above it was at 481. 480 was a contour at the bottom. I have it in front of me. It was out of the floodplain. It was not on the natural bank. It was not in the land on the water body. It was not in that narrow strip of BBW that runs along the lake, which is a couple feet wide generally on this coarse gravel Hinkley soil. So we lost the BBW. We lost land on the water. We wa lost the bank. Uh, and bordering land, so the flooding was also lost because now it's in the lake. So, yes, uh, it looks like to me that th he can't meet performance standards with what he now has under there. So we're going to be filing paperwork to, um, to have him remove the walls. Okay. Uh, or at, at, in, some, in some manner, it would have to conform to performance standards. And there's no way at this time that this project conforms to performance standards, not under the original order, nor under the amended order, which was a falsehood. And uh, so if DEP does their job, and I did hear from Mr. Rabula that, Yes, they're aware of it. Well, we're going to make sure they're aware of it. Okay. Through, through actually filing paperwork on it to force the subject. I, okay, I understand. I just wanted to make sure I understood what Mr. Clarity was saying. Thank you for clarifying that. My, my pleasure. Michelle, I'd like to ask Glenn a question. Sure. Um, given what you just said, and I understand mm -hmm. what you said in terms of it looks like construction had exceeded the property line limits. If that is true, and the construction in the wall and all that exceeded the property line, do you believe that all that exceeded area now belongs to the state or um, becomes public land? No, the, the wall is below mean annual high water. It, oh, I, I have a, sorry, a call coming in. The, the, it is in mean annual high water. It has violated the natural bank and you're only allowed to ask to alter up to 10% of the bank you own or 50 linear feet. It sounds like you might know that type of information uh, unless you write a wildlife habitat evaluation proving that uh, you can exceed the 10% of the bank you own or 50 linear feet. If you, and I can say that being in this field since 86, we've not seen a natural bank 
with some other consultants, a wildlife biologist, overcoming uh, the that the natural bank is not significant. So I believe clearly it is significant. And so he's not going to be able to overcome the 10 percent or 50 linear feet, whichever is less. Uh, I don't know where you'd replicate the wetland that was along the shore that HS&T showed to be left intact. I'm not sure where you'd be replicating the compens compensatory flood storage, excuse me, for uh, flood plane lost. And um, let's see, BBW land on the water body bank and uh, bordering lands up to flooding. Uh, four, four areas were violated, plus the fact that the wall now is in the water where the original plan showed it above the water. The other things, if you, if Mary would please share my letter uh, that I sent, and it outlines maybe not all of the orders that he violated from, but we bring out 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, D, 1, 2, 3, and I won't keep going. Uh, so we would definitely want Mr. Lane to have this and uh, and also the uh, the gentleman next door. Oh, and number five uh, on the monitor and having no monitor and no erosion control looked at before by the commission before he had no photo documentation before and after. Uh, all those good things that the this order condition stated, none of them were followed clearly because that's why the wall's in the water now and it was supposed to be on the upland and above the water. So. Yes, there are multiple violations that can't be overcome with the wall, the, at least the lowest wall staying in place. So I, I'm, I'm curious to see how the performance standards are going to be met now. They can't be. Without the restoration of what I just talked about. So will that change the dock configuration? Well, it, it probably won't start exactly where it starts now. We can most likely say that because it's further out and this whole thing has to be pushed back. I, it, I, I can't wait to see it. Well, We'll see what size crane it's going to take to remove this. It, can, it sounds like to me that in summary, the question Mr. Lane had about what to do about the dock application is necessarily in limbo until some other issues are resolved. Does that sound correct? If you're asking me, sir, yes. And we will file this paperwork within the next seven days. So it won't be in limbo too long. And since that, it will go to you and then eventually DP for their comment. And then eventually possibly just in DP's hands. We'll we'll, we'll see how that yeah, all that plays all out. Plays. Yeah. So Dan, I, I would agree as well. Since as a commission, relative to chapter 91, there are some key things that we approve. And that is the connectivity to land and whether it affects the wetland and whether the dock itself negatively impacts the wetland. And it doesn't seem like we're in a place where we can fully understand if this dock can be constructed as proposed. Correct. That we, we are unable to make that determination until some other issues have been resolved and maybe, maybe, some changes on the shoreline have been done. Agreed. Agreed. Until right. some of it lands in appropriate places. Um, other commissioners, any comments? I think I, I remember just... that an as bill was supposed to be um, created uh, for, that... for, for a 12 <laughs> tenant. Is that the as bill? If I through, through the lady talk, through the chairman, please. The as built is actually, you might say plays into our hand because it shows how far off the, the as built is to the, both the original plan and that hand sketch falsehood plan, which is called the amendment. Okay. If they both showed that he was not below the, into the hundred year flood plain of 480, he was still upgraded where that sketch plan was actually created after the wall was made. And so, yes, uh, you do have an as bill. We appreciate the as bill being created. Uh, thank you. I go simplicity. I, when, when I'm riding in my boat, bringing people around and people say to me, how was that house built? How was that house built? And, and you don't know, I look at this U wharf touching another wharf. And if I had to answer that I was on a commission that allowed that U wharf to be built, I'd be embarrassed. 
because it's touching and it's just of no concern to a neighbor. Right. Well, Mrs. Ms. Chairman, I would suggest that at this point, we are unable to give an answer to Mr. Lane. And therefore, we should continue this to some future date. I'm inclined to agree. Is anyone opposing this on the commission? I think um, if, if you guys take that route, which is a viable route, you need to make a determination on whether or not uh, Mr. Petrillo is allowed to put a dock in for next season until this is resolved. Well, the D DEP has asked Mr. Petrillo to remove his dock, correct? We've seen that documentation. And their basis for having him remove the dock was navigation or lack of permit, do, do you know? I think I actually, I still am not sure if I've seen this letter from the DEP, but it was my understanding, it, certainly lack of permit was part of it. Through the, through the chairman, Mr. Mr. Clarity does have, I believe the letter in, the, I would ask that Mr. Clarity forward that to Mary Oldholt. Yes, hi, yes, hi, hi uh, uh, Bill Clarity again. Uh, I did forward a copy earlier. Uh, I can certainly resend that, but again, there were, there were two issues. Uh, again, uh, there was a 60 day, it was a 60 day notice to remove the existing dock and, oh, oh, oh. and, and to apply for permits to replace, to replace it. it. Thank you. So as, as, as well as reference to the wall. Okay. Thank you. So, so Mary, if I heard you correctly, we have to make a determination as to whether Mr. Petrillo can put in a dock prior to this all being sorted out. Well, sure. right. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. just to give my opinion, and I'm one on the commission as usual, uh, I do not think that we should go against the DEP in this particular situation. And I would feel uncomfortable saying it's okay to put a dock in if it's still in the same formation as it has been, and there are currently so many issues on this property that have to get sorted out. I'm always open to any other opinions. Agreed. And I, I think um, we should table this until uh, DEP has come to some determination on the other issues. Thank you. Uh, does this, we don't have to make a motion for this, Mary? Probably should. <laughs> um, hmm. So, Dan, you want to take a shot at a, a motion? And I can help. I make the motion that the Chapter 91 dock permit for 12 Kenneth Avenue be uh, the, that we postpone a decision on that um, due to the fact that there are some other issues attached to it that we do not have the information on yet. A second. Okay, um, Dr. Jewell. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Duto. Yes. Ms. Sherilla. Yes. Mr. Bach. Yes. We thank the commission, Glenn Kowalski, uh, very much. Have a good evening. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you. Thanks, thank you for your time. Clarity. Thank you, good night. Good night, Ms. Lane. Stay safe. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Mr. Trillo. All right. I'm thoroughly exhausted now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so moving on to the next item under new business, and this is related to Webster Lake Association and the Pout Pond project. Um, there was a start of a discussion as to whether 
we thought this should be an NOI or whether it should be an amendment to the existing Webster Lake NOI. And I don't think we arrived at a conclusion on this. So I didn't know if there needed to be some discussion. Um, I know Joey's not here with us, so we may want to table this until he can participate in the conversation on it. Actually, I think I have an email relative to this that came in. Let me just check my email. Okay. Um, do we have a definitive outline of what the plan is? I know there was a, some early scope kind of. Yeah, they're, they're actually still working on uh, the formal plans, but at this point, I think the discussion should just be, you know, coming up with how we want to handle this. Not, oh, yeah. not the details of it, it's a matter of determining a uh, formal process. Which is kind of unfair, because what if they want to dredge? That's I've not our heard, that's not, that's no dredging has been seen anywhere that I've seen anyway. Uh, actually, there at some point there was discussion of dredging, but we yeah. have neither the power to permit or deny. That is under the jurisdiction of the Army Corps of Engineers. And if they decide that they want to do dredging, then they would need a permit from Army Corps. So we just didn't, if we want to cover our bases, we would just say if dredging is involved, you must present the uh, commission with the copy of the permit from the Army Corps so that we can have that in our records. I think we want to talk about it a lot more than that if they're going to dredge. But I get the point, the point I was trying to make is if it's not so similar to the Webster Lake Association's standard operating procedures, then we definitely want it to be separate. I'm confused at that. Given solitude is always included them, included the ponds in their accumulation of data. So why would it be separate? Uh, the pond is not included in the NOI. We excluded it specifically that why? we defined Webster Lake as north, south, and middle pond. Well, why did you do that? Why was it like that? Because that's how you define Webster Lake. Yeah. No, Webster Lake is not, all the pond ponds is are on every lake. map. Yeah. Hout Pond is not the lake. Club Pond is not the lake. They're connected, but they're not Webster Lake. They're not the Great yeah. Pond. I disagree. I mean, when they sell property there, they, they advertise Webster Lake. Yeah, they, they assess also sell their, they get the taxes of Webster Lake. Two miles away with an ocean view. They can sell property that's, any way you want. Yeah, no, another, that's, that's not what they're that, doing. It's not miles away. It's a, in, right in front of their property. Yeah. A, Club another, Pond is not Webster Lake. Yeah, what? another another it's issue with Salt Pond is in the tax record of Webster, Massachusetts, Mm -hmm. The whole area, Hope Pond and all the area around it is part of number 36, Birch Island Road. Yeah. It's privately, it's according to the map, it's privately owned property. It's not all of it. I spoke with Mark today. There's three, there's at least three properties on that area. Well, it's, it's no, you look at the tax map, it's all one piece. But the Mr. point Jones. is, the point I'm making is, if it is, then that needs to be, um, Affirm, and obviously the property owner has to give permission. Well, I look on Pout Pond. If you look, I believe there are actually uh, properties that abut it in there. Oh, I'm sure there there's are. more than more than one property that is defined. I think. I've got the names already. The, yeah, you look I've got the right names. there above. Yeah, if you. So yeah, the whole this whole piece is owned by like thirty six. Um, 36, it's the 36 Birch Island Road LLC. Right. So this so, whole piece is not, it's private property. Mm -hmm. But it's also abutted by other people. I mean, the whole lake has got private property surrounding it, it and we and we concluded it, that. Yeah. No, it doesn't but, matter. The fact is that Pout Pond is privately owned property. And it's not the Great Pond. It's not oh, part of the, it is the Great Pond. Part of the great we pond. beg to differ. We beg to differ. Give me some proof that it's part of the Great Pond. Is it defined that way? 
give me some proof it's not. It's Pout Pond, it's not Webster Lake. It's Webster this Lake, one. comes into Pout Pond, Treasure Island advertises it as Webster Lake, the marina where Joey and I went out twice. Okay. It doesn't but matter what Treasure Pound. Island calls it. It is not part of the Great Pond. You give, you give pond. me the information. What information I found, it is Sorry, part uh, of Webster Lake. Uh, just to cut to the chase here, what you are suggesting is that they, that for each subsequent project going forward on any area other than the Great Pond, it should not be included in the weed control uh, NOI that it should go through a full process and even though it is going to be the similar process to what is being used on the Great Pond itself. Yes, that is my opinion. And further that the Pope Pond project is specifically uh, targeting some natives and not just state declared invasives. Oh, the ones that Joe, the invasives that Joey pointed out to me? No, is it just, it's going to be, because he was pretty it, happy that that targeting was. targeting cattails, which are native. Cattails are native. And that's a big piece of this Pout Pond restoration project, oh. is the removal of cattails. And they are behaving in an invasive way in Pout Pond, but they are not a Massachusetts invasive, like milk oil, and Phragmites. And there is, there is um, if you see, look at this picture, the blue is Phragmites removal, which is also part of this program. Yep. But my concern about combining it with the, the Great Pond is the Pope Pond isn't the Great Pond. It and is the Great Pond. Cattails cat are not invasive, they are native. They're behaving in an invasive way, but they are natives. And all of the Webster Lake Association NOI focuses on removal of invasives and herbicides for invasives. Wow. And so I think it's would be it's concerning that you could now throw cattails into the possibility of my wanting the weeds harvested in front of my house, which include cattails. Well, the, the fundamental problem is that Pout Pond has been dammed, closed off, Phragmites have clogged the channel. So yeah. you have that like eutrophying for the past 30 years and you either let it die or you come up with a process to correct it. I'm not, I'm not saying we shouldn't correct it. I understand that there's a problem and it needs to be fixed. So I'm in agreement and I'm not denying it. You know, the fact that it's on, surrounded by one piece of property is kind of irrelevant because the entire shoreline of Webster Lake is private property. Well, okay, except for the, the Memorial Beach. Webster Lake is owned by the state and it's state property because it's a great pond. Oh, the Pelt Pond is surrounded, is one piece of property owned by somebody. Michelle. But it's Are not. It's, no. it's yeah, not. So I think that's that, an that important point. Way. So I, whoever owns the, the 36 um, Birch Island Road LLC, they would have to basically come up with some kind of easement to allow public access, which is fine. That can be part of the process. But I think that's that's just a point that since it's privately owned, there would be need to be some easement for the public to use that pond. Well, they would after this project, they would have access to Pelt Pond via the channel, which would be uh, navigable because part of the project is removing the dam that has been clogging up oh, Pelt Pond. No. For the last, since Treasure Island was put in there. And this is, and um, I, I'm getting some of Joey's colleagues in on this because they are a little bit more concerned with conservation than uh, minutia. And they're going to be writing up something in regard to how well that would be for the wetlands, which is our purpose, is to be opening I, up. Yeah. So, I, I, um, I think I, I think everybody's yeah. missing one of the points here, which is that, as Michelle said, if this is a privately owned piece of property, lumping it in with the work in the Great Pond Webster Lake sets a precedent. 
Uh, the oh, Webster Lake Association does their work in the Great Pond. If this is privately owned and not part of that, then it's it necessarily has to be a separate application and a separate project. The Lake Association did other projects that were outside as well. And again, I don't, I don't want to stop you um, as an example in their past, if we're forgetting their past. What past? What are you talking about the past? Your past, our past, the commission's past. I'm going to pass. Um, Good. No, the point I'm trying to make, Robin, is using examples from Webster Lake Association's past behavior is a dangerous place to go, given the arguments it starts and some of the issues we've run into. Bringing up conservation's past issues is a dangerous place to go. This is for the betterment of the lake. All of the okay. lake is surrounded by uh, private property. Um, like I said, I'm gonna have, uh, there's two or three of, of the people who've done um, some of the lectures on, process, on um, projects like this write up something. And again, these people are interested in conservation to get this kind of project approved would be something to be very enviable to any other place. Okay. So um, you're having them write something up for the purpose of convincing us it's not a separate NOI? No, I'm, I'm just doing it as a environmental wetland concern. Yeah. Okay. But oh, we're not, none, I don't think anybody's arguing that it shouldn't get done. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it, Robin, to, to answer what you said, what if, if there was a piece of property, you said, that, and around the lake, they're all privately owned. That's true. Yeah. But, the, but yeah. the work the Webster Lake Association is doing is not in that private property. It's in the lake, which is a, not the same thing. If they were going on somebody's property and cleaning out a privately owned pond, it would be the same situation as we're looking at here. It's, they have to have permission from the person who owns that property, or in this case, an LLC, apparently. You can't, you can't, doing work on private property is not the same as doing work in the lake. And it shouldn't be combined in the same application. I yes, they, they, they do work on private property, but that's between them and the property owner. Like I said, anyone on Birch Island, my, my aunt lived down there, she died last year. Anyone who lives on Birch Island does not refer to that area as Pout Pond. They are on Webster Lake, yeah. Well, yeah, can I just, excuse me, can I make a suggestion? Um, I had gotten an email from Joey at 515. He said he talked to Renee. She says they're not even ready for any discussion for a filing. So perhaps we might want to, I mean, you guys could take a vote on it now, whether it needs to be an amendment or a new filing or Robin and Fred, maybe you want to wait a few weeks um, and, and just bring it up, bring it up for a vote then. Yeah, I'd rather, I actually would like it when Joey's here too, because he was very enthusiastic. You're missing the point, Robin. I think you're confusing enthusiasm for correcting the problem with how to handle it procedurally. I don't think anybody is lacking enthusiasm when it comes to cleaning up Pout Pond and getting rid of the cattails and making it a beautiful place to kayak. Well, uh, Michelle, yeah. how about we have them set up another NOI for doing this that specifically says all water projects being done by WLA that are not on the Great Pond oh, has, to be, has to be amended. I don't or, know if you know, I feel about that, that either. Be, that, everything has to be separate from the why. I just yeah. think you yeah. open up Pandora's box when you try to make it too general and make it every waterway in Webster other than the, the lake. Well, you're arguing the counterpoint is that you're saying this NOI can only be for Webster Lake. The, and if we say you must specify the waterway, then if what we are saying is as our process, every future project has to be a separate NOI. So if they wanna do club pond or mill pond 
or some stream. Yeah. Those would all have to be separate NOIs, and that's fine, but that's why we're having the discussion now. Yeah, yeah that's it's fine. No. I think I think Mary has a point. There's obviously no need to rush to make a decision right. here. So why don't we wait and see? First of all, what Webster Lake Association proposes, and second of all, gives us time to think it over and maybe gather some more information. Yeah, great. That sounds good. Now I'd like to um, ask one question, um, just, just because I'm not uh, totally familiar with the history, but, but I am familiar with Webster Lake Association from many years ago and the studies that they do and the data that they collect. All the time that Webster Lake Association has been in existence doing studies of the water, do they include the, does, do they include the is, yes. in the I, studies? I call, I, yes, they do, yes. Now, see, Webster Lake Association, it's, well, I, I belong to anything to do with the, it, it, this, any of these projects are due with the betterment of the lake, improve things, get away the muck and the debris, be better for wildlife, be better for water flow. It's not, the, it's not the agency that gets a joy out of saying, no, you can't do this, no, you can't do that. It's really for, the projects are for cleaning up improving it's for real it's for conservation improving our waterways and um you know if you uh it's interesting how sometimes the committee you, you talk about the lake association making its mistakes certainly has human beings are in that isn't it funny how they make, and again on our conservation there have been pr plenty of individual mistakes that have been made i'm gonna okay. um I'm gonna go further with my, my thought process on the data collecting, because I'm not really familiar with this, um, but I, I did look at some maps. So ultimately the goal is to clean out the area so that the, that the water from Pelt Pond becomes contiguous with Webster Lake. Is that correct? Right, it, it was in the, 60, at the 60s, 70s. It was around when, again, no one does these things deliberately. Um, but Treasure Island, that building, some of the stuff on 395 was built, but that was a clean waterway. There, there's rumors that, boat, that speed boats could go through, but I definitely know it was open and kayaks, uh, rowboats could go through, you know, kids swimming actually would do it once in a while. So um, it's really, really for the betterment of the lake and cleaning it. And just like happened at Suckerbrook, we, it was, the Lake Association did that. The Lake Association did Maple Cove, all those people were involved. So, you know, I just feel that sometimes the commission gets a little crazy with making it difficult. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, moving on. I think we've decided we're not making a decision. We'll just fight another day. Got that. Um, Mary, do you want to go through an agent report before we consider any old business? Um, sure. You no, know if you want to. I don't think there's much yeah, it's coming to an end. Okay, well, just a quick note um, about 67 Colonial. Dan and Karen and I met with Mr. Arnold last Thursday, and Mr. Arnold will get us his plan um, this Thursday coming up. Um, plan or let us know if he is going to entertain them. Um, well, it sounds like it'll either be he's going to go to court uh, or um, he'll follow what we laid out for him to do. So but court really isn't his next. Uh, yeah, I guess it's his next. Well, because the the um, the enforcement order, if he were to appeal it, that's where he would go to court. Okay. I wanted to make note that all that information that Glenn was saying about Kenneth um, Drive in terms of disturbing, you know, land under a water body, BVW bank and all that, and not being able to meet the performance standards. He said that so clearly that that is exactly the same violations that Mr. Arnold did, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a, it's a very similar situation. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, and then just 
uh, just a 271 Kilder. I just like to, that letter, I haven't sent it yet. Um, just want some confirmation from the commission. I think the few email comments I got back seem to say no, no docs in at all until you have your chapter 91 permit. Um, I had originally written it as, because he has like three docs there, that he could put one in for the season just because he has a history of docs, but um, but the, a few people said no docs at all until chapter 91 permit is uh, received. And we have we had spoken to him in 2020 about getting a chapter 91 permit. And uh, I think what happened there is we had a little time to deal with him and then everything exploded when we started reviewing applications again and we didn't get back around to it. Yeah. So I haven't had a chance to read that letter, but I would agree with the commissioners that suggest no docs with no permit, especially given them almost a, you know months and months of opportunity. Okay, so I'll get that letter out unless other, other people have comments. No. Okay, and I, I've, Got the copies of your other letters, Mary. I'll definitely review them and send you feedback. I just am behind. That's fine. Um, for those of you who made it out to 109 Worcester Road, he called me today and he's like, well, where were they? And I'm like, well, I don't know, where were you? So maybe you guys, I don't know if you're at the right spot. Um, and anyway, we agree. Yeah, for an hour. <laughs> I know, he, he was like, I was there. I don't know if he tried calling him, so I don't know. We're, we agreed to revisit when the snow is melted, so that's the situation with that. We were there for a long time. Right? <laughs> yeah. He said uh, he left a little after nine, so I don't know when you guys got there. Yeah, yeah. It was. It, the problem was, like I say, someone someone was there. We just were unable yeah. to get their attention. We must have ran out of gas in that car because it was running the full time we were there. I mean, yeah. it was in the, so, so that one's odd. Um, and I think that's the main updates that we have. So. Um, and did the peer review fees item get settled, Mary? No, we, we do need to settle that. Um, I just, I, I think what I had emailed out was um, basically the 30 foot, um, 30 you know building if it's building within 30 feet of the resource area that they should have a peer review yep i thought um, we had agreed on that in the last meeting well joey wanted anyway he it was never voted on okay. <laughs> so we can vote on it does, does anybody right. have any alternate feedback to that peer review just to clarify that Mary can make the call if the work is within 30 feet of a wetland, she'll put in the peer review fee. Peer review fees already go into any of the bigger projects. Um, and that way we're not creating accounting nightmares for the town of Webster. It of course gives us always the opportunity to request a peer review fee or a peer review as needed. Yeah, and just to give you an example of the accounting nightmare, um, Kelly and I have been working on some of these and we've discovered that, you know, some of these are five, 10 years old. And so the person has actually, who paid us the money has actually moved. We can't even track them down. I mean, we, and so what, what happens to the money then? I, I mean, who knows what happens to money the money? That's money. Yeah, it, it has to just sit in a no man's land forever because you can't give it to someone else it has to go to the person but they've moved so there you go there you go so <laughs> anybody have concerns with changing our approach to peer review fees okay I, so we need it go yeah, ahead Dan. Sorry. i'm i'm fumbling for words i'm not sure what to say so um probably best if i say nothing Okay. Does somebody want to make a motion so we can actually vote on it? A bit. Uh, uh, can we clarify what the vote is on, please? Yes. <laughs> so we want to, someone might like to make a motion that suggests the going forward, 
that we not collect peer review forms at fees for work on single family homes that are over 30 feet away from the wetland. Make that motion. I'll second it. I, I, I'm, I'm, just, Go I'm just trying to consider if there might be a yeah, case right. where there are other considerations where, where we meet that standard, but there might be some other reason. We, yeah, we can always request a peer review fee, right? That's always an opportunity. Right now, we do it for every single family home. So more projects we're collecting the fee on than are ever used. And there's $30,000 sitting in <laughs> those peer review accounts right now. Right. And uh, that's... And Clarissa made that motion and I second it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and it, we may find out that, you know, $3,000 of that we can't even return. So that I think would be too bad. <laughs> I, that just makes me feel bad. An example of poor government. And that yep. would be our fault. <laughs> yeah. Can it go into the party fund? <laughs> no, it can't. It, can't. it goes to findmassmoney.com. <laughs> Do, we, do you want to um, pull yes, I'll read the, um, Dr. Jewell? Uh, no, I, I think uh, there could be too many exceptions. Eh. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Duto? Yes. Ms. Cirillo? Yes. Mr. Bach? Yes. All right. We've made a potential decision. Um, do we need to talk about Chapter 91 and potential doc policy? Um, we really should because we made so many mistakes by putting our two cents in where it didn't belong, and that was made clear to us by Ms. Hopkins, whatever. Yeah. So shouldn't we have a format of how far we go? I don't think that's what's meant by the doc policy. Chapter 91 and doc policy. Yeah. Um, I wrote something up. Michelle has seen it and I had a couple of questions for me on that and I have not answered them yet. So uh, So what, what Dan's um, basically proposing is to put some clarifying information on our website related to chapter 91, because we're still gonna have to review chapter 91s. We're still gonna ask questions. We're still gonna submit letters of our opinions on what the state should do regarding whether they should approve a chapter 91. And we are still here to provide guidance to the people of Webster because they yeah. don't understand how right. to do it. And I don't think I included in what I wrote um, anything about us sending opinion letters to DEP. I should add that in there. Yeah, right. Yeah. But would Chrissy Hobbs like like to look at that after we finish to make sure that we don't we don't overstep our boundaries boundaries like we were doing? I don't think we need to ask permission. It has nothing to do with chapter ninety one boundaries. No, I mean about what how far we how far we go with what we're giving ourselves responsibility for. Yeah, we, we really did overstep. Yeah, we yeah. we can still suggest to people that um, perhaps their dock configuration or square footage or something right. is, is not going to be acceptable to DEP. But um, the end result is we advise them that that's what we think. They right. can send it in. Mm. Uh, you know, against our advice. And if it gets rejected, we get to say, I told you so. And we, of course, will submit a letter saying we don't think that this should be approved for this, these reasons. Yeah, but this, like, but putting it down on the website is like, well, um, uh, a bunch of, uh, three of us had a meeting with Ann on making the website clearer. So this part would be important to that is how far um, the, the Conservation Commission will go with chapter 91. 
making it very clear to the public. Yeah, I, I, guess I, I, I think it's it's fair to say that um, we're allowed to discuss what the requirements are with an applicant mm -hmm. yeah. and, and tell them that, you know, if we have concerns, we're going to tell DEP about those concerns. Right. And then from then on, it's between you and DEP. Right. That we were all, yeah. Yeah. So, but it, it would be, it would be unfair of us to look at somebody's application that's really a mess and, and not tell them that. Exactly. You know? Right. Like I said, from um, the, the, the conversation we had, I mean, Ann gave us really a lot of stuff that we were doing wrong in our, a lot of our format. So we're really, so the three of us are really, Karen, me, and Dan are really working hard to kind of clean up our act a little bit on what we're doing. You mean, you mean we were being too enthusiastic? <laughs> <laughs> I listened to you. I listened to you. Yeah. But, so yeah. Let's let's move on and see what else we can clean up. Dan, I'd suggest that you pull this back onto old business when you're ready. Okay. Yep. So I should remove it from the the agenda for now. Yep. Thank you, Mary. Um, did you want to go through your financial information? Let's wait till Joey's. He's the one who really likes to look at that stuff. So let's wait till he's around. Agreed. Is there anything else? Anything else we need to go through that's on the old business list? Um, Robin, do you want to talk about the open space committee? Oh yeah, I've been uh, doing quite a bit of work at um, uh, market. Uh, Dan, myself, I don't remember if you were there, Michelle and uh, Joey went on a walk with Mark Vanderville. He joined him and kind of um, talked about. Um, you know, us being involved in open space. And I had seen Mark at some of his concerts and there was no phone calls returned. I don't know what Joey got busy or what. And so we've kind of teamed up and I'm working with conservation on the state level. Um, uh, Nick Rossi, he's given a number of lectures. Um, he's given us some guidance. Uh, we're um, actually Tom Claybert. We're hoping to get a land trust going. We're doing a lot of the work that, well, Mark was not happy with our commission that he, no one called him back. He felt it was really poor communication, but we're doing it now. We're hoping to get that land, land area plus some other areas under land trust. And like I said, it's in process right now. I'm hoping that Tom, because Tom did a fabulous job in Connecticut. Um, um, I talked to Ben Craver. He really wants it. He does. He doesn't want to have to sell the property and have condos there or whatever. So those people are really who are interested in improving the environment. You know, we want to get involved to get some of this. There's another piece of land that Mark was saying, but we're trying to get, at least get started on this one. So we've got a lot of really good people who care about the environment getting involved. That's good. You know what, uh, Robin? Um, I, I don't think um, a long time ago we had um, someone out from the Metacomet Land Trust who gave us a presentation. Yeah. Um, should we invite them to come back and see if they can help us or have suggestions? Um, can we? Talk, I want to talk with Mark because right now he's kind of annoyed with with the Conservation Commission. I want to make sure it's okay with him because he felt very frustrated. He was left in the wings. You know? Let, let's, let's back up, back up a little bit. Because I feel like, Robin, your first reaction is always to fall on the sword for conservation. When What's we wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> is that a problem? <laughs> this is the Conservation Commission. No, it, 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 it is. It, I think our job is very difficult. So when one of our own continually blames everything on us, it's very yeah. difficult for me to continue to go to meetings and continue to give it my best. So I, yeah. I would like to also point out that in the formulation of our open space committee, one of right. the key items was to inventory the current properties that are the responsibility already of the Conservation Commission and decide how to move forward with them to get some proper documentation in line because you're supposed to actually inventory all the properties. You know, if only you had been, if, if someone had talked to Mark and said that, I mean, 
I'm, we did. Sure. We did. Yeah, not according to him. Okay. Well, is he on the line? Because he might be there right now. Because I, so I invited him. When we formed the Open Space Committee, yeah, you and you and Mark were nominated to be the heads of it, and right. we talked exact specifically about what the goals were. And that one piece of property was very important, and mm -hmm. yet the ball got dropped. But there were other properties that needed to be inventoried, and it's yeah. not fun. It starts in, you know, a file cabinet, and then there's walks on properties. There's a lot of work involved. I but think that was I've been doing it the last month. But that that's that's the big piece of the open space because we already have responsibility for a bunch of land. Do, and what we, do we do? Okay. Where is this? Because I'm not aware of what we're what we're yeah, what that, we're doing. That's the whole issue. We need a list. <laughs> yeah, we need I mean, to Dan's to trying to get involved too and help, and we're kind of because pretty, there's pretty, a property right down here by me on Conkle that we own in conservation. Where is this list? Where is there is list? no list? You it, just it said there was a list. No, we need to create a list. So now we have an inventory and now we have, we don't we need to create a list. Which one we is don't, it? We do not have an inventory. We need you just an said inventory. That. No, I said we do not have an inventory. So that was Robin, yeah. So the, I can show you this land is one of our this piece of property here is a conservation land. Mm -hmm. And then there's um Michelle, what's the one you're thinking about? Conkle. Oh, the, that's an easement, the one on Conkle. Oh, the one where we have trouble with the ATVs? I yes. Think there's so, a piece along the water, and then there's a whole piece of land back there, isn't there? Yeah, this, um, yeah, either we own it or it's an easement. See, that's, oh, yeah, we have an easement. It's owned by CJP Construction, but this is um, Mary, open Mary, space. Um, in the next week, if it's not, I don't want to put another call Mary routine on there. We made that clear last week too, but <laughs> call Mary, call Mary, call Mary. Yeah. But um, if you could let me know these areas. And like I said, I'm speaking with Tom, uh, a guy named Ed French, like some of, yeah. So if you could get that, cause I don't know of all these things, but we went on Mary a walk. Doesn't know them all either. You do, do you? No, do you she know doesn't know them all. No, that's part you of the You don't know them either. No. No, we've seen things be handed to conservation and we don't know them all. And we don't have the baseline paperwork. When you have a piece of conservation land, you're actually supposed to inventory it and write up a document that explains the boundaries so you can tell if someone's encroaching or misusing the property. And you're supposed to be able to make rules for how they use the property. Rules. Like the land on That's what we need. Rules. Like land on Conkle. They're not there is, I think in the deed, they're not supposed to be riding on that land with ATVs, but they do all the time. I'm going to be working with Tom Clayberg on the land trust. And I actually talked to Ian and um, I'll see what she has to say. And if you could contribute, Mary, that'd be great. Because some of this, I have no idea what you, what I, not in the sense, I don't want to know as a flip answer, but I really don't know what you're talking about right now. I'm speaking well, to the one walk that we went on that the ball was dropped and he very much, Ben Craver wants to get this under some kind of um, Aegis French River connection. I spoke with Ed Bazinet last week. It's really not a lot of work. The whole issue that I see is liability. Um, is it safe to say that the land that you're talking about, is it deeded to um, Webster Conservation? No, yes. it's not. That's what they were looking into. Yeah. Oh, it's right. the, Craver, the Craver family owns it. Perryville. <clears throat> Brookside. Oh, ben so, so you can't look it up? What? You can't look it up on the registry of deeds, you know, just do a search, Webster Conservation? No, they're, no, they're, they're two separate things. <coughs> so it's, she's talking about the Perryville Trace. Yeah, it's, it's that piece of property right at the bottom left of the picture. <laughs> we don't own it. We don't have access to it. We don't anything. We want to. So that's what spurred the Open Space Committee. Where is the it down here? Our property are different. <clears throat> but did you say that the, that we already have land that we haven't inventoried? Yes. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> is that land 
under the name of Webster Conservation or the town of Webster that you could do a registry of deeds search? I don't yes. Know. You don't know. Okay. Yes, it is. Mary said um, yes. Town of Webster. Mary knows. Okay. And I mean, I think a, that's pretty easy. Yeah, well, except some of them, I, I don't know if it says that it's, this one should say under, I have a copy of the deed on this one, but there might be other town of Webster land that's, that's town of Webster land that obviously is not under conservation. I think we okay. have very few parcels, but there's there's some. This okay. is the biggest one that I know about. It was some, a, a lady gave us a very small piece a year ago. We may have some other smaller pieces. Weren't we going to okay. get a piece from somebody in Oxford too? Whatever happened to that one? Oh yeah, this one up here, I think, um, I don't know if they ever did that. Yeah, th this piece was, that was a nice piece. Yeah. So, so no, Karen, I, I, to sort of clarify, Robin's working on one specific piece of land. Okay. Yeah, and I think Robin, that's great to continue pursuing that and. Um, yeah, but I wanna know more about this, what we already have and if that could be incorporated in, into it. According to Ian, no. it couldn't be. So I need no. to go down there and speak with you guys. The you trust is get... different. The trust is different because we don't own the, the the other pieces of land are already legally kind of part of conservation and they're not part of a trust, a land trust. And I don't think so they can. Taking care, so do you, do you clean them up or what do you, what are we doing if we're. Exactly. Them? What are we doing? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. That's what I'm trying to change. What I'm trying to get across and you're missing is you can't Why throw missing? everything in a land trust. It's a different situation than the Perryville Trace. Completely different situation. Why was the ball dropped on that then? What was what happened? I'm, a, I'm so, not. I can tell you what what I know happened. There was an email from Mark. Joey was supposed to follow up on it. He had surgery, and through his recovery and everything else, the ball dropped, and nobody ever picked it up again. Tragic. Okay, yeah, but, but I want it's so it's every all of our fault. All of us on the open space take some responsibility for that ball dropping. Yeah. Okay. All right. Like I said, just I'd, I'd just like to throw one thing in here. It's in you mentioned like Metacomet Land Trust, and there are other land trusts around. It would also be useful if they could supply us with something like this that shows any properties that are in their land trust in Webster so that right, we, could they, see, yeah. so we could see the whole picture of what is in. Yeah, they don't, well, Mark they don't to have any. Dudley. No? Uh, Mark wanted me to call Dudley because he's- You know what, you guys, I, um, I should look this up, but there's an open space. There's a land conference coming up soon. Robin, you know, there is. I, I, I was on it before our meeting with Ann and I had to get off early, but you wouldn't believe uh, the people on there. I mean, there was oh, great. so dynamic. Yeah. And there was saying situation, like, like I said, my real question is the legality of um, the liability because, you know, first of all, a bunch of it killed there. We all get together and clean up the trash, but there usually isn't any because we do it every day when I, I don't have a Santa Claus sack on me, but when I go for a walk, I pick up a beer can or this or that. So there could be those kind of things. You make a shout out to Webster Lake Life Forum and you get a bunch of people. Two, Eagle Scouts, mm -hmm. uh, Girl Scouts, you know what I mean? But what you don't want to have is when somebody's clipping the, the, the uh, pickies and have it fling back into their cornea. Okay, and then have that who's going to be liable for that. That's my work. This particular land, um, thing, Ed Bassinet said it was never a lot of work. He would go there himself and click, click things. Mark would help him. So it doesn't seem like it's that, at least at this level. I don't know about adding all the other properties to it. But mm -hmm. again, you know, when condos go up and when people buy stuff and they put something there, then you're saying, oh, gee, why didn't someone buy it? Well, Ben's doing everything he can to make sure. Robin, did you realize that we walked through with Brandon and we got the Bernal pool in there certified? So it's that, now- what, That actually wasn't, this. didn't make Ben too happy. That wasn't the- That we had a certified Bernal pool. That's great. But I don't think Ben was all that happy about it. So. 
Well, so much for conservation then. Well, anyway, well, right, exactly. We're not gonna, we, we identify vernal pools and then we don't keep the area nice so much, right? Exactly. Like I said, I don't think it's gonna be all that much to keep up. It's more the liability on these things. Well, you know, and, we, they can be a good project for kids. Uh, for seniors, anybody. I mean, I don't want to say it like that because people you are- know how, uh, Robin, um, you know, I'm on the land stewardship committee in Upton, the town I live in. Yeah, I And know, I um, the, way we, the way we handle liability is on town-owned lands. Everybody has to sign a waiver, which says they will not sue that the won't town. Do it, but that won't do it. If somebody gets really hard, they're going to sue. They, this is well, what they do, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'll help things. But that right. doesn't eliminate it. You know, it just doesn't. No, I'm not, that's a great thing to suggest. I don't want to say it like that. But if someone, you know, there's different things. I mean, if a if chainsaw came back and a guy lost his arm, if you think that piece of paper is going to help things, it's not. So, all right. And I'll, I'll be, Mary, I'll be in touch with you because you seem to know um, this, some of this stuff. Okay, but anyway, it's in process and I'm hoping it gets, through, you know, that we can, we can add it to... Um, the do's and don'ts we do. We can have actually do something in plus for the environment and conservation. Yeah, and just um, Robin, just for your information, like in Upton, there's a land stewardship committee, there's an open space committee, and there, you know, some of the people cross over from conservation, but they have separate meetings, and it's it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of commitment, um, and so it's it, it's great we have this energy, but just you know to keep in perspective the concom like. The CONCOM and Upton never tries to deal with that stuff. They don't have time. And they have fewer projects than we do here. So I, I think- They do it, Gary. They do in Weston. Yeah, Weston, well, Weston- yeah, yeah. Weston's at my, uh, they have the most clear, concise website. They have got pictures, they've got graphics. They have about 10, 15 properties they take care of. So I don't know. I'm looking into it, you know, I'm not, I, you know, I haven't uh, right now of this property. Mike Mark Vanderbilt contacted me, and like I said, we I went to his concert. I'm learning, and I'll I'll let you know what what can be done. It, this particular land piece doesn't seem like an awful lot of work. Great. All right. Okay. So I'm going to suggest we have nothing else we need to talk about. Are we ready to uh, call it a night at 8:02? Yes, I think we are. Someone want to make a motion, Fred? Do, you, oh my do we want to have an action item for Robbins for the open space? Do you guys want to set up a meeting or? What no, do you want to do? I'm not right now. Okay. Because um, we're so working on the web page. I want to get that thing done. Anne really wants to get it done. I spoke with her and she's excited that we could finally get some of the issues of our commission straightened out. Wait, how many hours do we have? Yeah, it's a three hour meeting. We're getting three, two and a half hour meeting. We're getting there. Okay, does someone want to make the motion to adjourn? I made the motion. Marissa? Second. All right, everyone have a good night. So stay good safe, night. Mary, night. Commissioner Shirillo, Karen. Good night. Yeah. Good night. For those of you who are still on there, I, just in case you hadn't noticed, um, if you look at the maps, they've uploaded the 2021 aerial photograph